Welcome to the section on programming character generator RAM. The character generator RAM, also called CG RAM, allows the user to create up to eight custom 5x8 characters. Once programmed, the custom characters are accessed exactly as if they were in ROM. Since RAM is volatile memory, and this is what's being used, the custom characters can only be maintained as long as there is power to the LCM. Therefore, if CG RAM is used, it must be programmed each time the display is powered up, and the programming occurs immediately after the display is initialized. The CG RAM addressing is as follows. Each character is made up of 8 bytes, and these 8 bytes are stored at the CG RAM addresses indicated on the table. For example, character 1 the 8 bytes are stored at 40 hex through 47 hex. For character 2, its 8 bytes of data are stored from 48 hex through 4f hex, and so on and so forth. The character codes are the values that will be sent as data values so as to have the characters shown on the LCD screen. And to elaborate more, Let's take a look at the character codes. In analyzing the character code table, we see that CG RAM is located right here. The column is the high order 4 bit, and the rows are the low order 4 bit. So the character code for CG RAM 1 is 00, for character 2 is 01, character 3 is 02, for 4 is 03, for 5 it's 04, for 6 it's 05, for 7 it's 06, and finally for character 8 the character code is 07. And this reflects the character code seen in this table. We create a custom character by using the following 5x8 layout. A character can be created by darkening selected pixels. A darkened pixel constitutes a 1. Then the character can be broken down into its 8-byte hex code. This code will be inputted into the appropriate CG RAM addresses. Let's come up with two characters and the codes associated with both of those characters and also see where we can place this data in CG RAM addresses. I have already drawn two characters and I need to come up with a hex codes but also I need to emphasize that at the very top of the columns that make up the character we have D0, D1, D2, D3, D4 and then we have three X's. These are really don't cares, but these are standing in for D5, D6, and D7. Again, if the pixel is dark, it's going to have a 1 assigned to it. And if it's light, it's going to have a 0. So for the top row of character 1, the 8 bits will be 0, 0, 0. And since D4 down to D0 are all light, they will also have zeros. And so converting the binary into hex, this is 0, 0, hex. For the next row, we have 0, 0, 0. D4 is a 1. Then we have three lows, and D0 is a high, so that's a 1. And the hex code is a 1, 1 hex. The next row, there is no pixels that are dark, so therefore there will all be lows. And so the hex code is 0, 0 hex, just like the first row. For the next row, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And the hex code for this is a 0, 4 hex. And for the next row, it will be 0, 0 hex. 
Next row is the same as the second row. That'll be 11 hex. The next row is a 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And that will be a 0, A hex. And then finally, the last row is a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And that is a 0, 4 hex. Continuing on to the second character, we see that the top row is the same as the top row in character 1, so it has the same hex value. And for the second row, it's the same as a character on top again, so that's going to be 11 hex. And since all of the pixels are light, and they're all lows, the next row will be a 0, 0 hex. And this will be the same as in character 1 for this row. That's 0, 4 hex. And again, all of these pixels are light, so they're all lows. So I have a 0, 0 hex for that row. And for this next row here, if we want to write it out, we have a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And that's a 0, 4 hex. And the next line is a 0, 0, 0, 0. 1, 0, 1, 0. That'd be a 0, A hex. And finally, we have a 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that would be a 1, 1 hex, an 11 hex. To determine where our CG RAM address will start, let's go back to our table. In the top table, we see that character 1 We'll start off at CG RAM address 40 hex and continue on through 47 hex. The second character will just keep on incrementing, which will go to 48 hex and continue through 4F hex. Therefore, we'll start characters 1 and the top row will be assigned to address 40 hex. Next one, 41 hex, then 42 hex, 43 hex, 44 hex. 45 hex, 46 hex, and 47 hex. And then continuing, this will be 48 hex, 49 hex, 4a hex, 4b hex, 4c hex, 4d hex, 4e hex, and 4f hex. Now that we have the hex codes, and the CG RAM addresses where those hex codes will be placed into, now we can look at a program and take this information and insert it into our program that will allow us to program CG RAM and also to call up the character codes to cause these two characters to display on the LCD screen. To program the custom character, first send an instruction to set the starting CG RAM address. Usually this will be 40 since it's the first address of the first character in CG RAM. If during initialization the display was programmed to automatically increment, then only the single initial address 40 hex need be sent. The eight hex codes that comprise the first character can now be sent with eight consecutive data writes. If more custom characters are to be programmed, simply continue data writes with the next set of eight hex codes. All eight custom characters can be programmed in 64 consecutive data writes after sending the initial 40 hex address. Here we have a program that takes our two characters and stores them into CG RAM and then displays them on the LCD screen. Looking at the beginning of the program, we have the origin line then we have two equate lines. Then we initialize the 68HC11 stack. Then we start the initialization of the LCM. We take care of the function set, entry mode set, display on off control, and display clear. The next instruction, instead of going to address 80, we have told it to go to address 40 because address 40 is the start of CG RAM. If we were not to have used CG RAM, then most likely we would have told it to load accumulator A within 80 because that is the leftmost character space 
on the LCD screen and so therefore that's where we would be sending our character codes to so we could see uh, the characters that we want on the screen but because we want to program CG RAM we loaded accumulator A with a 40 and then we did a JSR instruct subroutine then all the next 16 bytes that are data writes this is the programming of the two characters into CG RAM once those 16 bytes have been sent the next thing we need to do is to take care of the address again and now we need to go ahead and choose an address that is on the LCD screen once again in most cases we're going to send information so it starts showing up going left to right so therefore the leftmost character space on the screen is address 80 and this is what's referred to as the home position so I loaded accumulator A with an 80 and then sent it a JSR instruct subroutine and then from there I loaded a 00, zero and then did a JSR data and then loaded accumulator A with a 01 and did a JSR data now the 00 is the code is a character code for our first character so that calls it and it's going to show up at address 80 it's going to show up on the screen at the leftmost character space that's what's going to show up then by loading accumulator A with a 01 and doing a JSR data it takes the second character's data and then it uh, popul populates it onto the, sec the second character space that's on the screen and we see it there now after that since this is the only thing that, that we wanted this program to accomplish I just put it into a control loop with a branch over and if we follow on just to show the rest of the program we do have a delay which provides enough of uh, a timing space so that the LCM will respond appropriately and then we have our two subroutines uh, one for the instructions and one for data and then at the very end so that this program can run in single chip mode on the 68HC11 we take care of the reset vector intro by having an origin at FFFE and uh, performing a form constant byte of F8 and 00. What this does again uh, since we've already talked about it but what it does is it stores an F8 at address FFFE and a 00 at address FFFF so that when the 68HC11 comes out of reset it grabs those two bytes as an address and from there it jumps to that address and starts executing code. And this concludes the session on how to use CGRAM.